Tonight. It just, it shouldn't be legal. A creative and expensive solution for the University of Regina to recoup parking fines from repeat offenders. Also, the family of a Saskatoon cyclist killed last year is pushing for better trucking safety standards. Road day Simpson, breaking through. And a superstar athlete and sometimes actor, the man perhaps best known for being acquitted of double murder, has died. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Thursday, April 11th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. The opposition NDP is raising questions about the provincial government's decision to give a contract for knee and hip surgeries to a Saskatchewan party donor. The Calgary-based company is Surgical Centres Incorporated, and it did not have to bid on the $6 million contract. The company employs a former Saskatchewan Party Finance Minister, Kevin Doherty, as one of its lobbyists. Opposition MLA Mira Conway says Surgical Centres have donated more than $14,000 to the Sask Party since 2016. She says the deal has not helped Saskatchewan improve its ranking for hip and knee surgeries. At the end of the day, this is a $6 million sole source deal, uh, a sweetheart deal, um, with a SAS party donor. Um, and, and people are tired of the, of the SAS party looking to their friends and donors um, for solutions to the real crises we have in our healthcare system. At the time, I understand back in 2022, I think some of the longest waiters for hips and knees uh, were waiting upwards of 800 days, I believe. Um, and it has reduced that uh, number by being able to give uh, a number of those patients the, the opportunity and the option to, uh, to get uh, their surgeries in, in Calgary. In question period on Wednesday, Health Minister Everett Hindley said the company was awarded the surgical contract through a competitive process, but told reporters afterward that he made a mistake and that the company received the contract without having to bid against others. He says the contract did help reduce the province's hip and knee surgery waitlist, which did balloon during the pandemic. Students at the University of Regina say a new parking enforcement tool sucks, and it really does. It sucks to your windshield, immobilizing your vehicle. As Louise Big Eagle reports, cash-strapped students are not happy about another financial pressure. It's called a barnacle, and it attaches to your windshield with giant suction cups. The University of Regina is using the device to penalize drivers with $200 or more in outstanding parking tickets. The students we spoke to says the university is going too far. Obviously, if you're not paying tickets, there should be consequences, but I don't know if blocking someone's vehicle or not being able to drive away from your school, like some people rely on that for their livelihood, so yeah, I, I disagree with them. Like, what if you don't have the money on the spot? What happens to your car? It just, it shouldn't be legal. In my opinion, I don't think the university needs any more money right. from and students it's, yeah. like it's expensive enough to go here so to walk out to that yeah. I would be it's very unfair yeah it's I really, would be really upset yeah, yeah. yeah. I, w I don't like that yeah. <laughs> yeah. once motorists discover their vehicle has been barnacled they will be able to scan the QR code or go to the site the motorist will then enter the information pay their fee and receive a release code once entered the barnacle device will detach the University of Regina did not respond by deadline, but its website says the barnacle is less invasive and easier for drivers to deal with than the traditional towing. They don't have to track down their vehicles to an impound lot. They just have to pay the fee at any time of the day to get the barnacle released. Then they have to drop it off at a drop box located on campus. The university also says it gives drivers who have outstanding tickets prior warning. I find it to be really exploitive. This psychology student often refuses to pay for parking. Amanda Leader studies at the First Nations University of Canada and the U of R. She has racked up thousands of dollars in tickets. I had to pay off a substantial amount of tickets. It was nearly $3,000 in tickets because I find it to be um, unfair that us as Indigenous students get ticketed here at the FNU NIV, the First Nations University of Canada, on reserve, urban reserve land. She's still paying off her credit card. And with the rising cost of living and tuition increases, she says the university is using barnacles to prey on struggling students. Louise Begeagle, CBC News, Regina.
The trial of a Kerryville, Saskatchewan man charged with abduction began this week in Regina. Michael Gordon Jackson allegedly failed to return his seven-year-old daughter to the care of her mom in 2021. Laura Sharpaletti has the latest on the trial. The Court of King's Bench in Regina heard from multiple witnesses today that said that Michael Gordon Jackson did not want his daughter to get vaccinated against COVID-19. They said he often talked about taking her away. The girl's mother, who is estranged from Jackson, had primary custody of the daughter. She said that in November 2021, Jackson failed to return the daughter after a long weekend visit. This morning, court heard from Kurt Jadel, a former friend of Jackson's. He testified that Jackson said he was the better parent and that his daughter should be with him. Jadel said that he often talked about taking her to BC and living off the grid. Jadel said, quote, he was pretty dead set on her not being vaccinated. RCMP Constable Curtis Yowsey also testified today. He says police were in contact with Jackson through a friend who acted as a go-between. The officer says Jackson didn't trust police and thought they would try to track his phone. Yowsey also testified that the mother signed an affidavit saying that she would not have their daughter vaccinated against COVID-19. The intent was to convince Jackson to return the seven-year-old and turn himself in, but that did not happen. The constable says they ultimately tracked Jackson to Vernon, B.C., where he was arrested and the girl was returned to her mother. The abduction trial continues tomorrow morning and is expected to take two weeks in total. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. Students in northern Saskatchewan are taking action of their own in response to the teacher's contract dispute with the province. It keeps us all active and also outgoing there. A student strike was organized yesterday in Cumberland House. The students are upset about extracurricular activities being cut due to job sanctions. Organizer Raven Chaboyer says extracurricular activities, especially sports, are extremely important to students in the north. Those sports are a big motivation-seeking thing for us. It makes us actually want to come be student first, but when now that it's gone, I barely see any people in the school. Chaboyer says she hopes this protest will bring awareness to students in the north who say they feel they are not being heard. Nearly one year ago, a 33-year-old cyclist was hit by a concrete truck and killed at an intersection in Saskatoon. There was a safety review done, but the family wants more. As Dean Patterson reports, they want, to ch they want changes to truck regulations to ensure they're safer. It was here at one of Saskatoon's busiest intersections that 33-year-old Natasha Fox was struck by a concrete truck on May 24th last year and died. No one was charged in her death. Since then, her family has been advocating for more safety measures to help cyclists. They believe Natasha could have been saved if the truck driver had a better sight line. The fact is, nothing has changed since my wife has died. My wife was killed by a Heidelberg Materials truck on May 24th, 2023. Her, her death could have been prevented. She would still be here today if we had a direct vision standard, if we had measures that protected vulnerable road users. And I know that if he was able to see my daughter, he wouldn't have driven over her. But he did drive over her because he couldn't see her. And that's about the equipment. Natasha's family wants to see the direct vision standard. It's a rating system that was pioneered in London in the United Kingdom, making sure drivers of heavy vehicles can see around their trucks. It provides different ratings for better visibility from aspects like lower cabs and more window space to see others on the road. But creating that type of regulation is a big step. Last week, Natasha Fox's husband, Todd Fox, spoke to a city committee about it, and Saskatoon's mayor, Charlie Clark, was interested in hearing more. As a mayor and as a citizen and as somebody who is also sometimes a cyclist and a pedestrian, um, and I have kids that are out there uh, who you want to make sure everybody is safe when they're traveling around, I think it's worth looking at and seeing what role we could play in helping to make sure that um, we don't have the large vehicles operating in cities with blind spots. In a statement, City Manager Jeff Jorgensen says Saskatoon will look at a possible pilot project to retrofit city vehicles with enhanced visibility measures. Natasha's family hoped that the truck company involved would also advocate for the standard. They declined, so the family turned down their offer for a scholarship in Natasha's name. We encourage one to be done without it. 
we're safety advocates as well, but not, you know, it's not necessarily our place to, to, to do that. I mean, for, for Canada, I mean, what is it? Transport Canada, I believe in the U S it's the DOT that regulates those. So that's their approach and regulations are just a part of the safety thing. So when we focus our efforts on how we can improve things, we're going to focus our efforts in different areas that we have the most direct impact on. Sieg says they have their own safety measures in place with others rolling out. SGI says it's aware of a federal pilot project regarding the direct vision standard and is in the process of connecting with Transport Canada to discuss it. We've reached out to Transport Canada but have yet to receive a response. Dane Patterson, CBC News, Saskatoon. Members of Parliament accused Bell Canada of corporate greed in a very public, on-the-record kind of way this afternoon. Liberals, Conservatives and New Democrats all grilled CEO Mirko Bibic during a combative exchange. It happened during a meeting of the House of Commons Heritage Committee. That included a critique from former Saskatchewan journalist, now Conservative MP, Kevin Waugh. You have destroyed what has taken decades to build the CTV network. I know because I was one of them for four decades. I worked three to midnight. I worked weekends. I worked holidays. I cherish those times. Why? Because I gave back to the community. You have gutted local newsrooms in this country. Don't tell me you've had it. We're down to one hour a day live in Saskatoon. Regina does everything. We in Saskatoon only have one newscast now, six to seven. We had six and a half hours of local news every day until you made your decision in the spring. You and your organization have destroyed local news in this country. You should be ashamed. Parliamentarians had ordered Bibic to appear and answer for the cuts, which affect 9% of Bell's workforce. 4,800 jobs were cut in February, ending multiple newscasts across the country. Bell also sold off 45 of its 103 radio stations. Bibic cited a shift in Canadians' viewing habits away from traditional TV and blamed factors like productivity, inflation, and delays in the implementation of the federal online streaming act. A live look now from River Landing in Saskatoon. A gorgeous view of the river. It is a pretty nice spring day out there. Ethan Williams is in the Bridge City today and he will join us from there with your forecast after the break. Stay with us. A handful of restaurants in Toronto are celebrating a big boost this week. It follows an unexpected visit from American TikTok food critic Keith Lee. As Katie Nicholson shows us, with 16 million followers, his reviews can have an immediate impact. This is going to be crazy. <laughs> Minutes from opening for lunch and the online orders are already pouring in. Hey guys, let's do a little quick prayer. Dear God, we just want to thank you for this day, yes. that the influx would not make us frustrated. Kilandra Edgecombe asking for help from the heavens like after to appealing to someone else on TikTok. Kenzie, tell him your mommy makes the best food. My mom makes the best food. That video posted Saturday directed at Keith Lee, an American MMA fighter. These look amazing, boy. And one of TikTok's mm. most influential food critics. That's good service. His reviews rack up millions of hits and drive hundreds to the small independent restaurants he visits. This is a 9.8 out of 10. And I'm he's just great. eaten his way through Toronto. For show you right on. God damn. Dropping God. review. That waffle is soft and buttery. After review. That's unique. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. After review. Yeah, it tastes like... Like a banana loaf. After review. With the cheese sauce. It's like an 8.5 out of 10. He posts. It's very tender. 8.4 out of 10. His followers flock. Ever since he came by, the, the, the wait time is double. If not an hour and a half, then two hours. We've been officially Keith Lee. They're ordering everything Keith Lee ordered. Are they really? Yeah. Yes. Lee saw Edgecombe's video and dropped by the same day. I was at the cashier and I looked and I saw 
Keith Lee, and I started freaking out. I was like, no way, like, no way, that's not Keith Lee. And he came to the cashier, and he was like, the food was amazing. Have you been here before? Or? No, never. No, so yeah. you came just because of Keith Lee? Just because of Keith Lee. No Daniel Abraham loves what Lee has done for his city. With inflation, with how hard it is to keep a business, and after COVID, what happened, it's important for us to support these businesses. For Edgecombe, it's an answer to her prayers. But I've just been praying and asking God, like, please just do something for me that I could stay open because it's been hard, right? And I feel like a push like this is going to help us to stay open for a long time. And possibly maybe even expand her restaurant. Katie Nicholson, CBC News, Toronto. This weather update is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz Regina. Proud member of the Capital Automotive Group. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now from Saskatoon. I'm a little jealous you're outside. It looks so nice out there. What do we have in store in the forecast? Oh, it is absolutely beautiful, Sam. Uh, the sun's shining down uh, this evening. Very warm out here. Uh, you can see the uh, ice floating away on the South Sask River behind us. And one helpful passerby uh, telling us this evening that the pelicans have returned to the weir not far from here uh, on the South Saskatchewan River. Sure sign of spring uh, for sure. And it wasn't just uh, us in Saskatoon enjoying the sunshine today. Let's take a look at satellite radar and you can see much of the province uh, was sitting under those clear conditions. Uh, really not a whole lot to speak of in terms of activity. There were some pop-up showers in southern Manitoba today, but for us, Sunshine, definitely the story. In terms of the winds, uh, also a very calm evening, as you can probably tell down here in Saskatoon. Uh, for Regina and southeastern Saskatchewan, we saw those gusts picking up a little bit from time to time uh, through the afternoon today, but much of the province under those uh, calm conditions. Temperature-wise, uh, you can see we're still uh, quite warm through south and central. We are dropping off in the north, near freezing in some places up there, especially as you go a little bit further north and east. And as you head down into south and central, you can uh, see those uh, daytime highs, especially the further southwest you go in the province. That, once again, was really where uh, that warmth was today. The reason that things are so calm and so sunny for much of us is this big area of high pressure, which is over the province, and that's kind of joined by another one just off to the north. Things are going to change, though. As we go through the night tonight, cloud cover starts to move in as those highs move out. We have some snowfall, which will begin moving through western sections of the Churchill region, and then that'll be moving through much of the rest of the north as we head through the day tomorrow with a mix of some rain in there as well. Then things clear out to, uh, for south and central into Saturday, still a bit unsettled in the north. And then finally, as we head into Sunday, uh, you can see another area of high pressure starts to move in, and that should be clearing out skies for many of us. Rainfall amounts uh, for the north from that system likely going to be in the range of two to four millimeters, maybe some pockets of five to six millimeters in western sections. In terms of snowfall, going to be kind of hit and miss, but probably about one to three centimeters, and that will generally uh, be in kind of the far north of the province, I think is where we're looking uh, for that. Wind's going to start to pick up as that high moves out overnight tonight, and by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, we're looking for a pretty gusty day across the province. Winds 50 to 60, particularly in the south, and then as we head into Saturday, the north uh, starts seeing those gusts pick up as they uh, begin to move in, and things will be quite breezy uh, for south and central as well. You'll see that in the extended forecast here for Regina, uh, where we're looking for a couple of breezy days Friday, Saturday, but temperatures still quite nice. Chance of an afternoon shower tomorrow in Regina. Then that big pattern changes we get into the start of next week. We're looking for temperatures dropping, likely some substantial moisture coming for not just Regina, but Saskatoon as well as we start to see a system move in from Alberta. But for Saskatoon, in the meantime, next couple of days, uh, we're looking for breezy but very nice conditions. A nice weekend ahead and a gorgeous evening, Sam, uh, if you're looking to come out here to River Landing this evening. It is uh, beautiful out here. All right. Thanks, Ethan. The ancient Roman city of Pompeii is yielding another stunning find, a banquet room with breathtaking murals that have been preserved for nearly 2,000 years. There's also a mosaic floor of a million individual tiles. The Mount Vesuvius volcano rendered Pompeii a tomb in the year 79. We'll be back after the break. The federal government has unveiled its plan to make home ownership affordable for more Canadians. Chopping the list is allowing some first-time buyers 30-year amortization rather than 25. These are all real 
tangible measures that are going to help more Canadians get into the housing market and buy their first home, while protecting Canadians who already own their own home. The longer amortization change applies to first-time buyers purchasing a newly built home on insured mortgages. Current rules limit amortization to 25 years if the down payment is less than 20% of the home price. The Canadian Home Builders Association has been pushing for the 30-year period. Other measures include permitting larger withdrawals from RRSPs for down payments and requiring lenders to offer permanent amortization relief to borrowers meeting certain criteria. The family of O.J. Simpson says he has died of cancer at the age of 76. Simpson was acquitted of double murder in 1995 in a trial that captivated the world. And though he beat the charges, the former NFL superstar became a pariah. Cameron McIntosh has more. They won't get him. From the beginning, he was a star. 80 yards for O.J. Simpson. A U.S. College Heisman Trophy winner. O.J. Simpson breaking through who became an NFL legend, a Hall of Famer, later a top sports broadcaster, Nobody does it better than her. who also found success in commercials and movies. O.J. Simpson was a beloved American icon who lost it all live in real time. That infamous 1994 white Bronco chase one of the most watched events in television history. Simpson fleeing police amid suspicions. He killed his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman. He's been impeached with his own voice. The following so-called trial of the century, a cultural fascination, which split America down racial lines, arguing over the fit of a glove. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. That line took on a life of its own while the trial itself changed the U.S. justice system, normalizing cameras in courts and trials portrayed on TV as dramas. We, the jury, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Simpson was acquitted, but his name was far from cleared. He was found liable in civil court for the deaths and ordered to pay the families more than $30 million. He never did, claiming bankruptcy. Legal and financial troubles never went away as he became a pariah. In 2008, a confrontation at a Las Vegas hotel led to a conviction for armed robbery. He went to prison for nine years and was released in 2017. Okay. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. The following years were marked by sketchy social media posts and opportunistic cameos. Through it all, he maintained his claims of innocence. The story of his rise and fall, now over, remains a touchstone of modern American history. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg. And Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. Well, we're looking at a beautiful evening here uh, in Saskatoon, Sam. In Regina, we'll take a look at what we're uh, seeing at midnight tonight. Uh, mostly uh, clear conditions uh, to start the evening and then a little bit of cloud cover building in as we head through the evening hours as uh, we take a look at temperatures around minus one or so. Uh, getting into the morning hours, that's when we see that cloud cover start to build in around 8 a.m., a temperature of three degrees. And then into the afternoon, more cloud cover. The wind starts to pick up from the southeast and some showers as well. Now for Saskatoon, looking at uh, the cloud building in pretty quickly, we'll see that likely by midnight, by the morning cloud fully in place and some gusty conditions and yes possibly by the afternoon the potential for some showers as we look at uh, temperatures around 10 degrees so a little bit different than what we're seeing right now Sam. All right thanks Ethan. And that is it for us tonight for News Anytime. You can head to our website our YouTube channel or download the CBC News app. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.